Well, our second cup tie today is the All Midlands one at Molyneux between Wolves and Coventry, and that pulled in a crowd of 50,000. And among them, of course, was our commentator, Hugh Johns. Welcome to Molyneux, which is packed out for this private battle between Midlands clubs. This is the Wolves lineup, and the return of Wagstaff must surely increase the menace of that dangerous front line, where young John Richards is in such tremendous form. 26 goals and two of them so vital for they put out Bristol City and Millwall. Coventry field the side that put Hull out in the last round and it's their strongest formation now that wing striker Brian Alderson has recovered from injury. He's knocked in 15 goals this season, three of them in FA Cup ties. <laughs> Referee John Homeward of Sunbury on Thames' lines with Mr Clive White of Harrow and Mr Brian Robertson of Shepparton. Coventry attacking the goal on the left. Black and white, the colours may look very similar. In fact, Wolves are wearing the old gold, the famous old gold shirts, and Coventry, their sky blue outfits. Shaw whacking a long one, which will curl for a throw in deep in Coventry territory. Clubs who have never met in the FA Cup before, and stretching back to the early 20s when they played in league matches here, curious enough, 13 have been played. Each side has won five. That was uh, Hibbert practically losing his shirt to Tommy Hutchison. Kenny Hibbert then, the throw in for Shaw. On for Hibbert, the cross is on. Dugan touching across the box. Shaw challenging in again. Offside flag catching John Richards, far side of the box. Willie Carr's got to bring this ball back. Willie Carr, the live wire spring motor of the. Coventry midfield section. Chap who drives everything. Bill Glazier playing in his first ever quarter-final tie in the FA Cup today for Coventry. Parkin knocks it forward. Coop for Coventry. Munro's under this, so steep. Hutchison handball. Quite a deliberate motion on the upper arm. Kaliog, the free kick quickly taken, didn't pick up his man, Coop's got it for Coventry. Mortimer, Smith, Willie Carr, Bernard Shaw tight on him. That's a goalkeeper's ball, Jerry Taylor makes sure it is. Dugan against Barry and Barry won it. Shaw, much too strong, hoping to pick up number 11, Wagstaff. Will Smith for Coventry. Steen. Mortimer, going well, this boy. Alderson, well stopped by Taylor. Willie Carr now, nobody stretched wide on the flanks. Well taken down by Wagstaff. An early ball, hoping to pick up Richards. Parker's there. Munro knocks it forward again. Dugan against Barry. And Dugan gets the touch on. Richards, the speed of him. He must be in for it. He's got it. John Richards. Six minutes into the game, and young John Richards keeps his cup dive. Ball again, streak going. Scored against Bristol City, scored against Millwall. And here in six minutes, he's put Wolves in front. The through ball. John Richards outstripping young Bobby Parker, who couldn't last the pace on the run towards goal. And Richards slipping it in, side the right-hand post. A tremendous start for Wolves, 1-0. Coventry now. Coming forward, McCallion stops them, and Wagstaff has hardly touched the ball so far. Picks up Shaw. Wide here for Hibbert. Catlin coming in to face him. Good ball. Jimmy McCallion. Just a little bit too fast for him, and McCallion pulled up then, and looking as though he might have pulled a muscle at the back of his right leg. It certainly looked as though he started for that ball, as though he would get it. And he looks to be in some pain. Monroe winning it well in the air. 
Kaplan. Kinden got Kaplan after the ball had gone, and Kaplan's down. He's up again now as Kinden starts off again. Parker stopped him. Willie Carr, Mortimer, Alderson, and Munro has come to the wing to face up to him and won it. Won a second time by Shaw. Wolves biting with much more positive urgency in their tackles. Alderson, the box ball, Hutchison. It's on for Mortimer. Too long for him. Dennis Mortimer, one of England's newer under-23 internationals. Phil Park's pretty good record in goal for the Wolves this season. 14 of their 47 games, he's had no goals against him. Dugan aiming for Hibbert. On for Wagstar. A turn ball for Hibbert, a bit short, but he won it well. Took it off Smith. Long low one. And there was Richards. Biting and looking for the crumbs falling from the rich man's table. Only just wide, he got a flick away for a corner. Hibbert's low driving ball. Bouncing awkwardly as it came to Glazier. And John Richards, eager as ever, there to look for the rebound. Ball's not in the quadrant. So Hibbert, tiny bit of breeze to assist the in-swing. Kinnan got a lump of it, and Shaw will try the shot. Went through there like a, a googly ball, bouncing first one way and then the other. Pivot knocking it up. Barry down for Catlin. Coventry then going, attacking the goal on the left. Mark's hitting a tremendous long ball for Dugan. Tries the shot, the loop ball. Well, he made that one loop well, but it looped over the bar instead of under it. Will jump Steen, but unfairly. Steen really not having much joy against uh, Frank Munro. Parkin for Wolves. Dugan. Wagstaff. Dugan goes for the return down the touchline. Barry comes to him. Barry gives the corner away. A lot of pressure on Roy Barry this afternoon. Barry, 30 years old, fine career with Hearts and Dunfermline before he came down to Coventry. The area that uh, Hibbert will be aiming this corner for. Dugan! Harry! No! No! John Homewood kills Dugan's... Kills Dugan's smile of triumph. He spotted a foul inside the six-yard box. 33 minutes into the first half, and it's still 1-0. Dugan's header, not allowed. Team down for Hutchison. Early ball on, and it's there for all the sun. Now Willie Carr. Good try, away by McCall. Punched in there by Coop, and Carr was yattering and nattering at referee John Homewood. And a free kick's given against him. I think he was... Uh, he was saying that there might have been a handball in the box when that shot went in. Dugan getting a tiny piece of it then. As referee Homeward points to the dressing rooms. And we have the end of the first half of this FA Cup quarter-final here at Molyneux. The man who put that scoreline up there for Wolves, John Richards. Wolves kick off the second half then, attacking the goal on the left. one nothing up, and Coventry have decided they want more drive in the side. 
Will Smith has not come out for the second half, and there's the substitute immediately, number 12, Mick Maguire. Mick Maguire with uh, some 43 league games behind him, just 20 years old. And Wolves to pick up where they left off in the second half. But Coventry still just one goal down, knowing that one good shot, and they can be right back in this cup tie. Here's Maguire. Willie Carr, through ball for Alderson. That build-up looks a lot better. Now Hutchison playing more orthodox on the left side. He was on the right side most of the first half. Hutchison, a difficult man to dispossess. Has he done too much against Taylor? Trying to make the angle for the cross ball on his left peg, and he gets it there. Dugan, the dummy against Barry. Chase on between Dugan and Barry. It's got to be firm. Munro up, but it's falling for Steen. A little touch was all that was needed to feed it to uh, Hutchison. Brief reminder for viewers in black and white that the colours may look very similar to you. The Coventry players perhaps quickly identifiable because their numbers are on their dark shorts. Which is all right when they're facing you, but I imagine it's not too good when they've got their backs to you. Dugan got a small tickle on it. Mortimer tries to hook it out, didn't win it. Richards! Right down and this penalty's given. Penalty given. The two fullbacks, Kathleen and Coop, together, knocking John Richards. Sprawling and referee John Homewood is on that spot. He's given the penalty. Well, Bill G Glazier, only last week, saved a penalty from the best man in the business, Franny Lee. Now the pressure building on Bill Glazier again. I wonder what thoughts are going through his mind. Hibbert is the man that he faces. Hibbert, who's already hit two penalties this season in cup ties. Neither of them in the FA Cup. And Hibbert hits a very firm ball. All the pressure then on Bill Glazier. And he's there. It's 2-0 to the Wolves. Glazier gets the right way. He dived and he couldn't have been more than a couple of inches away from that ball when he hit the ground. But it's 2-0 to the Wolves. Four minutes into the second half. The penalty awarded by referee John Homewood as the ball sneaked into the box and Richards went for it. He was sandwiched by the two fullbacks, Coop and Catlin. And Hibbert made no mistake from this spot. It's a healthier looking scoreline for Wolves now and a terrible blow for Coventry who had looked a much more attractive force in the opening stages of the second half. Colin Steen, Hutchison out down the left touch line. Munro comes to face him. Now Taylor comes in and Hutchison looked as though he got a bit of a whack from Munro then. But the phlegmatic Phil Parks pops the ball down to get the game going again. Mortimer knocks it forward. Taylor whacks it in there again. Dugan. Hibbert. On for Dugan. Big gap there. Great big gap. And he's just wide. Oh, Dugan would be delighted if that somersault was in praise of a goal. And he wasn't much more than five to six inches away from getting it. Dugan spotted the gap was there and charged into it to try the shot. Munro doing things pretty firmly and solidly this afternoon. Taylor really has given so little away at right back for Wolves. Carr for Maguire. And again, Willie Carr is caught out at the referee. 
John Homewood will want that free kick taken again from the exact spot that uh, Willie Carr was shouting at him. Now, Roy Barry, the skipper, asks John Homewood what it's all about. And I suppose John Homewood says, you're not going to talk to me like that. Can't get away with it. That must be about the third time that uh, Willie Carr had said something out of place during the course of this game. The frustrations of 2-0 down, building up in the Coventry side. Throw in on the right side, Wagstaff. Uh, waiting for somebody else to take it. It'll be Hibbert. And a chance for Richards! Oh, my gracious me! How do you miss him from there? What an incredible moment for John Richards. That throw in from Ken Hibbert, bouncing or going over Dugan and Barry, bouncing so perfectly for Richards, and from what? Five yards, high over the bar. Steen feeding Mortimer on this right side for Coventry. Kinnan coming back to hustle him. Mortimer's in a bit of trouble down there now, not much room to work in. Coop. Handball. It's Hibbert. About 12 minutes of this game left. Coventry 2 0 down. And they dearly love a goal now. They've sent everybody forward to look for it. And that was Hutchison just wide. Um, Barry, I'm sorry. Roy Barry. mistakes that uh, Derek Parkins made this afternoon. Car for Alderson. Car on for Mortimer. This looks useful. Wow. And gets Monroe. It's a good job it wasn't uh, a yard and a half to the left. and saying that it did in fact happen inside the box, but I think from this angle here it was quite clearly outside. Willie Carr sizing up the kick situation. Indirect free kick. Up by Taylor. Hutchinson under it. And that's a fine try by Roy Barry again. Cope for Coventry. Now Maguire. Much too firm for Mortimer. Kendon trying to glide it on. Barry for Willie Carr. People shouting for the ball from Willie. Maguire gets it, gives it back to Carr. Steen. Mortimer to his right, and Carr's gone on through the middle. For Alderson instead. Willie Carr with a shot. Oh, what a fine try. What a very fine try from Willie Carr. Just clipping the outside of the post from one of the sweetest moves that Coventry set up in this second half. A neat passing movement. And Willie Carr getting on the end of the shot. won it well. Now Hibbert down for Kindle. Dugan. Dugan 
and trying to knock it down the line, didn't get there. Wolves have won the, the FA Cup four times in their history, the last time in 1960. Foul given uh, against Parkin. Climbing above uh, Alderson. Coop with a free kick. And again the offside. Flag catches Willie Carr just about on the penalty spot. With Willie Carr, things haven't gone his way this afternoon. Well, time now to look at one or two points that emerged from that uh, excellent cup tie at Molyneux yesterday and a chance really to pay a little tribute to a man who the older he gets, the better he seems to get, our old friend Derek Dugan. Here's Jimmy Hill. Well, it's good to see the Duke going so well. There's no doubt about it. He really is in splendid form at the moment. Uh, well done, Wolves, on that uh, victory. It looked to be a very interesting cup tie. Hard luck, Coventry. Naturally, I was a little disappointed to see them lose that match. But for me, it looks as if the better team won in that cup tie too. But there was a disputed penalty. It was the, I think the moment, maybe not so much disputed, but it was the moment that really the killer goal happened against Coventry. The second goal, the one that really put them out of the game. Not too good a clearance there. That should have been got farther upfield. But the ball's won, and I think you can see as Richards go for, goes for it there, Coop comes at him, jumps all over him, knocks him to the floor, referee right on the spot, no doubt at all that it was a penalty. And, of course, here's Hibbert now coming up to take it. It was a beautifully taken penalty. But on the other hand, Glazier, I thought, did very well to get even as near as that to that fierce shot, but he wasn't near enough. And, of course, that was the second goal and the one which really decided the game. But what about Derek Dugan and, of course, young John Richards? Coventry knew about the double striking threat before the game, but even knowing about it, I don't think they were able, really, to stop the brilliance of those two particular players. Let's look at some of the action that they produced from the game yesterday. And I must say, not because he's a member of our World Cup panel, but it is a treat to see the dude in this kind of form. He lays the ball off here. In fact, he didn't quite get his toe to it. Barry did it for him. But look at the way he's streaked into space. He's left Barry there. His uh, aged legs, shall we say, looking very young as he keeps ahead of everybody. And I think Bill Glazier got a touch to that, just the end of a finger to that. And you can see the dude still showing his athleticism there as he turns over. In fact, in my view, he got a perfectly good goal. Hibbert takes this corner. Watch carefully to see whether you think he handles the ball here. I think it went cleanly in off the back of his head, but uh, John Holmwood's there, and uh, he spotted some kind of infringement and disallowed that goal. And I think you can see the dude there saying, it didn't touch my hand. Never mind, on that occasion, they could afford to have one go against them. But what about the final goal? Or well, the first goal, the really beautiful one, there's Dugan winning the ball so well in the air, and look at the ground here that John Richards makes up. Bobby Parker can move himself, but he's got no chance against that kind of running and also having the strength to stay up and put that shot finally in the corner. A really fine performance there from the old professional Derek Dugan and the brilliant young one, John Richards. But I understand that Derek Dugan got a knock on the head in the kicking in before the game and I can only suggest if that's the kind of form he produces after that, Bill McGarry better find a way of doing that before each cup tie.